Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich here. We're going to get right into the meat of what's going on. Hurricane Idalia, you can see the winds are up to 105 miles per hour and unfortunately it looks like it's getting stronger, but it is moving very fast. That means it is going to make landfall early tomorrow morning, maybe late tonight. It's continuing to gain strength. That fast forward speed also means it's going to carry strong winds pretty far inland. Let's look at the, the uh, image from the infrared satellite because it is... Ugh, it's it's ominous looking. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to move my head down here. You see that pinhole eye? That's an indication of a very strong hurricane. And notice the cold cloud tops completely wrapping around. It's a small storm. Um, it's got that, you know, kind of wheel shape to it. But that is, that is a powerful storm. And it's still gaining strength as it's moving to the north. The radar tells a similar story. Uh, you can see the the spiral bands in there and that's a very well-defined hurricane so it's a buzzsaw moving towards that area of the big bend region and again the water's being pushed in really strong winds down in this area too we're seeing really strong winds in these bands actually some surge now really beginning to push in to tampa bay so surge is going up here but overnight tonight this water is going to come up really really quickly and the concern is you know tampa bay in particular you're probably looking at three to six feet but then this big bend area, I mean, this is this is already an area that is very susceptible to storm surge. So you're looking at eight to 12 feet of storm surge and it can move really far inland. So Cedar Key area looks really in particularly uh, a tough spot. So look at, let's look at the forecast track. Florida, it's time to be in your shelter location or inland or evacuating if you can. Um, everything here is pretty straightforward. We know where it's going. It's going towards this area of the big bend region. You're talking 25, the 35 mile difference air there's not much air left in this this is going to head as a 115 maybe 120 depending on what happens it's probably going to strengthen all the way to landfall because it's moving so fast those strong winds will make it well into southern georgia so people in georgia northern florida a lot of tree damage power outages there because 85 mile winds well inland begins to weaken slowly but still strong winds near charleston um, two o'clock in the morning on thursday it could be 60 mile an hour winds and then going into Thursday afternoon, it starts to move off to the east with 50 mile per hour winds. So it is still going to have some pretty good winds with it. The big story for the Carolinas, at least locally, is going to be flash flooding. Flash flood watches up for a big chunk of the area. That is going to be our major concern here. So when we look at the rain impacts, the rain impacts are going to be significant. Um, high flash flood risk for most of the Carolinas uh, east and along I-95. And then a medium risk pretty much from I-85 south and east. Mountains and foothills, you should be in the clear. Now, the wind risk, it's not zero, but it's much lower inland near the coast. We could see gusts to 45 to 50, but you're looking inland areas around 15 to 25, gusts 30 to 35. It's definitely going to be a windy, windy day. Let's take a look at the future cask. I think this will kind of show you everything as far as timing is concerned. You can see we're going to see scattered storms tonight. That's because of that stalled front. But tomorrow, likely dry in the morning, but then we get to about, I'd say, 3 or 4 in the afternoon. We're likely going to see some of the first bands here and notice the center is here so look at all this rain on the north side that's what could be hitting close to the charlotte area so the piedmont is going to be right on the edge of this look how close that band gets just to about charlotte um with the heaviest rain down here from columbia to you know florence up to lumberton and fayetteville um some serious i'm gonna turn this down so you guys can see me better um, but some serious rain there continuing to push east so wednesday night pretty rough that's 10 o'clock 11 o'clock pretty heavy rain midnight you know one two in the morning and then it starts to push east you wake up on thursday morning it's in the outer banks uh, down east uh, north carolina and then by middle of the day starts to move away and improving weather by thursday afternoon so that's the good news it's a fast moving system the problem is it's going to bring a ton of rain on top of areas that are soaked and yes a ton of wind um, look at the strong winds a big core of 50 to 75 mile an hour winds moving into the Carolinas. 6 p.m. tomorrow, strong winds in Hilton Head, Charleston, eventually up towards Myrtle Beach. Notice Charlotte's winds only gusting to like 25, 30 miles per hour. Stronger winds definitely to the east. Hatteras, you know, your winds are really going to pick up Thursday morning as the system passes over. And on the back side, don't be surprised to see some 70 mile an hour winds and maybe some sound side flooding as the winds switch around to the northwest. So the timing is pretty straightforward in our area so now it's the time to prepare um, for some flash flooding on the coast in florida hopefully everybody is safe of course we'll post updates at 11 o'clock we're all kind of waiting to see how strong this is getting two hurricane hunters flying in there right now 
um, seeing how strong this system is getting. And every pass I see, the pressure continues to fall.